In this video, we'll be making some bookends, and you'll see the branding iron in use at the end. Okay, I'm Jim Vanderstaff, and welcome to my shop, Down East Wood Art. Uh, here's a project that you can make that will turn uh, into a, a conventional item into a nice, decorative, and appealing item uh, for your books and bookcase. This is a conventional um, bookend. And you can see it's just a standard thing. It's um, actually pretty unattractive if you think about it being in your bookcase. So uh, my dear sweet partner, Sylvie, uh, suggested that what I do was uh, cover this with some nice wood. So that's what I did. And uh, then there's a groove down in the middle. And uh, we'll actually go ahead and make one here. Um, that just uh, slides over the top of that, you push it down on hard, and it locks it in place, and there you got your bookend. So uh, she said, well, can't you just, you know, can't you just cover that with some nice wood to make that look attractive? And I said, certainly, I can be very, very happy to do that. So I wanted to give you, we'll make one like I say, I just wanted to give you the dimensions. This is a standard item, uh, happens to be uh, four and five eighths, and it's tall, five inches. Um, so what you do is you make this one, I think it's, uh, it's five and a half, and it's five and a half inch tall as well. What you want to do is make it wide enough so that it gets stuck in there. wide enough so that you can glue the edges. So you can see there's a little bit of an edge glue there, here. You can't see it here, but it's uh, right across the top. So uh, we'll go ahead and do that. I've got this piece of wood, and first thing we'll do is we'll just cut, uh, we'll cut these into the right lengths. And so, Making this end will give it plenty of room, like about here, and we'll cut two pieces like that. So we'll adjust this dust collector so that it collects some of the dust. And Alex, if you can switch on that one. Just mark it on the outside to indicate the areas that we're going to cut out with the router. OK, 
Okay, so we're going to take this piece over the, to the router. A little jagged on that edge, but it didn't go all the way through. I'll just clean this up with a chisel, and we'll go from there. That maple is hard. Let's 
see how we do. That's good. Plenty of room all the way around. So, now, just a matter of meeting these up and putting glue on both sides. You can see we got a nice groove there. And this will just slip into it quite well. So, we'll dig out some glue. This uh, jagged cut in here like this is typical for when you're doing uh, a cutting with a router because the piece tends to move when it's not against some solid surface. So if you do something like this, just be very careful and uh, have a safety device like this to hold the workpiece in place. These are grip rep. Um, I found them to be very useful. <clears throat> and I'm not getting paid to give them a commercial. I just find this product very handy. Uh, anything for safety like that is just very useful. Once we let this set up, that'll be the next thing, and then we'll round the corners on it, and we'll sand it down, and we'll put a little beeswax on it, and make sure that it fits up properly, and <clears throat> it'll be a nice little project. Okay, that's good on the glue. Now, <clears throat> again, we want to make sure that we get the right side. I like the way this looks, and that goes against there. So, we'll just take it, rub it down in, make sure it's sealing properly. A little paper, towel, clean off the glue, and I'll put some clamps on it, and then we can go from there. Well, these clamps, I can just use these little ones because this doesn't have to be particularly tightly clamped. Good. I'll just set that aside and we'll get to it later. Ready? Okay, good. So, uh, getting back to the, um, the bookend that we've just glued up, you can see that it's got a little glue on the outside. We need to sand down the edges, but the uh, groove that we put in there is just right. Uh, I believe. We'll check it out. Yeah, it goes in there just nice and it'll sit like that. So, now what we want to do is just round the edges. You can use anything. You can use a compass if you need to, uh, but I just prefer to do something like this just to mark it. It's, it's so much easier just to follow a little mark like that on the bandsaw. So,
random orbiter, orbit sander. Very handy for these kinds of things. Very nice and smooth all the way around. This is like a glass-like finish. That's beautiful, just right. All right, so next step. Uh, what we'll do is rub a little beeswax on there. And I've got that right here. Nice and smooth, huh? Very handy. So this is a little beeswax that I acquired some time ago. It's just very useful for small projects like this that don't require protection from water stain, uh, just require a little uh, protection on the surface. So you just take a bit of beeswax and rub it in. It brings out the grain of the wood. And while these are two dissimilar pieces there, um, that's really not too much of a concern because that'll be on the inside of the bookshelf. Uh, normally I would make that out of a single piece of wood, but this is just some wood that I had around as scrap and wanted to make use of it. This beeswax is lovely, it's a lovely finish. Just wipe it off when you're done, and you get a tremendously lovely glow to the wood. So that's good. And we'll get a rag and rub it in. And we go from there. Rubbing it with the grain. So, now, I just want to go over this because I think it's important uh, to talk about prior to the next step. And the next step is uh, when you use a branding iron to brand this work, this piece, but only if we're satisfied with it. So. Um, I've developed what I call my approval criteria. So, there are five different items. And I say, have I met the functional design goals, including the client needs? I'm trying to, you know, I came up with a method that applies across all the work that I do. So, did I meet the, the design needs? And uh, I can say yes, with the exception of this non-uniform um, uh, grain pattern here. That was a piece of scrap wood. I'm doing this for, if I was doing this for a client, I would find wood that would go all the way across, but I'm quite satisfied with the functional aspects of this. It works as design. It replaces the, the rather unattractive piece of uh, metal that was holding the books before. Now, has it met uh, the levels of craftsmanship? Does it, is, is it suitable? Is the joinery good? Uh, can, I, uh, can I be happy with this product? And I answer yes to that. Have I met the finishing goals? Well, I've got a nice beeswick finish on this. It's glass smooth. I think the answer is yes. The next item is safety criteria. Do I have any safety criteria? Well, there's none for this one, but that's, a, that's an item that I pay attention to. And then, can I say at the end, I'm happy with the result. So, being happy with the result, the next step is to go and put my brand on it. And the way we do that is 
This is a branding iron, and I can give you the the information about where I obtained these. Uh, mine says um, handcrafted by James Vanderskaff. That's the brand. Okay, that's what you're going to see on this piece of wood. If you want to look at this, that's what it's going to look like. So now I'll show you the process of doing it. We have to heat this up. All right. So we got it in a vice. Now we just heat the thing up. This takes a little while. <clears throat> and you become familiar with how long it takes because you see the surface uh, take on a different color. I'll show you that in a minute. If you shoot the camera from this angle, you'll see what I'm talking about. It just takes on a whole different color as time goes on. That's the initial phase. It's just heating up. And when it starts to flash back and forth uh, with a different color pattern, then we're getting close to the temperature. Now you can see it cool on one side and heat on the other side, and you're starting to see that pattern. We're getting close. And usually I try it on another piece of wood just to make sure we get it at the right temperature. We're there. Try it on here. You see when it steams up like that, you're good. There we are. Just a perfect one. I'll heat it up a little bit more and then we'll do it on our piece. Right, this is the bottom and it's the thicker part so we'll put it right in the middle perfect now you remember that this is a hot end so you set it on something metal so that it doesn't do any damage but that's basically it so that's it for this video, and thank you very much for watching, and please come back.